Hello and welcome to Good Deeds, a program about the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds. I'm Mark Crosby. Thank you for joining me. And also thank you for joining the Registrar of Deeds for the county. That would be Norfolk County once again. That would be Bill O'Donnell. So Bill, uh, welcome back. Mark, thanks very much for having me uh, in, in Quincy Access Television for doing this and to, to the viewers. Uh, yes, uh, the, you know, the, first of all, the Registry of Deeds is located at 649 High Street in Dedham. We serve uh, the 28 communities of Norfolk County, but we also serve really the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and beyond because people um, from out of the state are using uh, the Registry of Deeds. And so hopefully the information that's provided gives a glimpse of what's happening uh, in, in uh, Norfolk County. But really, it, it, you know, you can learn something about the biggest asset most of us have are our homes. And a lot of what we talk about here in Norfolk County applies to people that live across the state. I will. Uh, I'm glad you said that because uh, I think after the first or second program that we did that um, went throughout Norfolk County, I, I think I told you that um, Shirley, the town of Shirley, which isn't in Norfolk County, asked to run the program because the information was relevant to that town as well, um, not again directly related to county business, but related to the registry that serves that town. Well, it, it, it serves, uh, you know, the issues that we talk about really transcend uh, town lines. I mean, when you're talking about a homestead that protects your property as a principal residence. That's Massachusetts legislation. Exactly. Um, we, 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 we talk about uh, mortgage discharges. It doesn't matter that you, you're in Norfolk County. People borrow money across the state, and if you're paying off your mortgage, you should make sure the mortgage discharge gets recorded. Um, People are doing more and more historical and genealogical research. And again, they're looking for information all across. And I tell people to go to our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, uh, because it has uh, information on state laws that, that apply to everyone in the state. But on an issue like <coughs> historical and genealogical research, Norfolk County dates back to 1793, and there's a tremendous amount <coughs> of research that people can do. We have four presidents born here in Norfolk County. There's a deed from the, first, the second president of the United States, John Adams, to the sixth president of the United States, John Quincy Adams. But more importantly, um, from 1793 to 1900, there were over 450,000 documents that, um, that has been tr transcribed. That, that was a History Comes Alive project that we did. And John McCulloch, who, uh, David McCulloch, who recently passed away, um, actually wrote a note uh, complimenting uh, uh, the project because he said it was always hard reading the cursive and reading the documents, but here we have a, a project where if you go on our website, you can look up the uh, legal document, which is the handwritten cursive document, or you can hit a button and, and see the transcribed document. And we're seeing more and more people um, looking at that for historical and genealogical purposes. So again, um, hopefully, uh, you know, people can, you know, get some information. The statistics that we're about to talk about are uh, really about Norfolk County, but I think the trends probably um, go uh, statewide. And uh, certainly uh, global and national factors uh, that do affect our economy, uh, they affect our local economy. And there are issues nationally, uh, for instance, interest rates are going up because they're trying to address and combat uh, inflation. And what has that done? The rise in interest rates have had an impact on so many levels of um, statistics at the Norfolk Registry of Deeds. For instance, document volume. And I'm giving three months of document volume, July, August, and September of 2022. Uh, total documents recorded in 2021, it was 48,341. In 2022, it's 32,496. That's a drop of 15,845 documents. That's a drop of 33%. Um, and then one of the components of document volume is how many deeds get recorded. And deeds, um, evidence, sales, uh, you know, the, the passing of property from one to another. And again, in 2021, for that three-month period, it was 5,893 deeds. And in 2022, it's 4,642 deeds. Um, a drop of 1,251 de deeds, or 21%. Now, uh, 
that just shows you that the impacts that some of the economic concerns and problems that the, the country is facing is spilling over locally. And um, one thing I, we mentioned was the rise of interest rates. I mean, interest rates used to be 2.5, 2.75. Now they are 6%, 7%. You know, that has a couple of impacts. First of all, it has an impact on refinancing. So when you look at another document that gets recorded, when we borrow money, mortgages get recorded. And mortgages get recorded because maybe we're buying property, but mortgages get recorded because we're refinancing. We might have kids in college. We might need to renovate our house. Uh, there's any number of reasons why people borrow money, but Significantly, in 2021, there was 10,869 mortgages in that three-month period. In the same three-month period of July, August, and September in, in 2022, it was 5,567, or a drop of 5,302 documents, 49%. So that, that's really impactful. And also, I think the rise in interest rates have had an impact on the demand side. We've talked to brokers. Uh, we hear antidotally that a lot of people that may have been in the market have now kind of taken themselves out of the market, and, and that decreases the demand. And you can understand if you're trying to buy a house for six, and you're borrowing $600,000 at 2.75% or 3%, and now that same 600000 is being borrowed at 7%, that, that, that's tough for a lot of people, and I think it's taken some people out of the market. I, I would point out that, uh, that uh, the average sale price that we track, commercial and residential in Norfolk County, um, th that actually went up uh, by $105,000 during that three-month period, or 11%. So it went up 11%. Now, I think, it, I th I think there are things that are slowing prices and slowing sales. But I think we have to also recognize that um, Norfolk County and the greater Boston area, there's a real demand. Uh, and um, it hasn't caught up Na nationally in other areas. Where they're seeing a real drop off in prices and drop off in sales of homes um, and drop offs in value. Uh, it hasn't quite hit um, Norfolk County yet, but it could. And one of the drivers may also be a lot of people work remotely. And they're saying in 2020 and 2021, that actually drove up prices in a lot of areas because people weren't tied to a certain area. Now uh, that has changed and people are going uh, working more at the office. Well, I was wondering that because uh, if people were continuing to work remotely, the <coughs> office space wasn't needed, so commercial space wasn't needed. Uh, Yes, uh, you know, prices are still strong here in Norfolk County, though, and, you know, and some of it's just driven, for instance, uh, in the city of Quincy, there was a uh, sale for $18 million uh, at 1515 Hancock Street in Quincy. So, you know, there are still some significant sales going on uh, for both residential and office. But not too long ago, the asking price of homes, often homes, <coughs> and, and I probably commercial property as well, people, businesses, companies were paying beyond the asking price. And that's what we're hearing antidotally, just for instance on residential, there was multiple parties, there could be six parties uh, bidding over asking and competing for that uh, home. And it doesn't seem, at least talking to the brokers, uh, that that's happening there and you have to price your, prop your property uh, well uh, for a sale. Uh, but th there's still a demand. One of the things that troubles me statistically, and we track it, and we started, we never tracked foreclosures or notices to foreclose, but then people forget there was a downturn in 2007, 2008, and again, um, you know, behind the statistics are stories. And I said, we have to start tracking, you know, foreclosures are a problem. And, and it was at that time that we partnered up with NeighborWorks uh, Housing Solutions and Quincy Community Action Program in the Attorney General's office because of the foreclosure crisis in 2007, 2008. Well, we're, we're seeing a, a really troubling trend. Uh, for instance, uh, foreclosure deeds. There was a growth of foreclosure deeds uh, in Norfolk County. And again, foreclosure deeds are at the end of the process. 
um, that is where a bank or a lender that has foreclosed on someone records the deed. And, and those are up. But what's more troubling is the notices to foreclose. And the notices to foreclose, which is at the beginning of troubles, that a lender has filed by law, they have to file a notice of foreclosure sale, uh, notice of foreclosure in at the registry of deeds. And um, we track that. And, and sometimes people get themselves out of it. They might be facing a, a job loss or a health situation. Um, but in the first quarter, uh, or in this quarter, uh, which is uh, the first quarter of the fiscal year, third quarter of the calendar year, but July, August, September 2021, the notices to foreclose were 30. In the same quarter in 2022, it is 91. That's a 60, uh, you know, volume-wise 61, but that's, that's over a 200% increase. And I would tell those people, go to our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, and if you live outside the county, go to the same website, because we have uh, partnered up with some quality um, nonprofits, as I mentioned, uh, the, the you know uh, you know Neighbor Works Housing Solution and Quincy Community Action Programs. They help people. They give people guidance to get them through. They give people help on some of the legal ramifications of what a foreclosure is, and also the uh, Consumer Advocate Response Division of the uh, Attorney General's Office. We have links to the Attorney General's Office, so people should take advantage of that. We should uh, no surprise to folks that we should also talk about or at least um, for context, is that uh, certainly when looking at foreclosures, uh, food prices are up, uh, gasoline prices were up, came down, but that's only because we tapped into our reserves. Just a report I heard uh, yesterday that um, OPEC was meeting today and likely gas prices will be going up again. So that affects a homeowner's ability to pay. Yes, and, and, and people are making, uh, always making assessments. So, yes, that, all these uh, pressures um, affect the ability to pay, and that's why we've seen the foreclosures go up. And also all these pressures affect uh, demand on the demand side of housing because um, it, it might get to a point just like the rise in the interest rates where you're like, I, I, I can't afford that. I, I, I have to put gas in my car to get to work or I have to feed my family. And to have a, a, an extra cost, you know, from say a 3% mortgage over 30 years versus a 7%, it's pretty significant. And, and, and again, it's, it's affecting demand and a lot of what we, you know, what, what we see happening worldwide or nationally does impact the local economy absolutely the war in Ukraine for example yes and uh, and again uh, there's there's uh, you know you mentioned the the oil you know oil prices there's, there's a lot of uh, back and forth and, and, and uh, to, to you know try to hit back uh, at the support of Ukraine try to hurt uh, the West and the United States economically with with uh, you know increasing uh, reliance on, on oil and gas so you know that's uh, it's all it all it all uh, it all has an effect it's all connected certainly uh, let's talk about uh, some other registrations news. I know uh, not too long ago you presented before the uh, county commissioners regarding, I believe, the chief information officer? Well, th that's been an ongoing issue. That started back on June 30th, 2021, when, um, you know, there was a lawfully funded and approved uh, registry CIO uh, position that didn't get filled. And uh, again, it, it was unfortunate. And here we are 15 months later, and, and, and we're still talking about things because now the county has taken over the IT. And, you know, and everyone knows my position. I, I feel that a direct report IT staff at the Registry of Deeds that existed when I, uh, Register Paul Harold was there, when Register Barry Hannon was there, it goes back 40 years, served the registry well, served the taxpayers well. Uh, but right now we're trying to uh, work through what they're doing, but it, it hasn't been a considered approach. I mean, the final vote to put everything in the hands of the, the county commissioners was on May 11th, and here we are, um, you know, five months later, they still don't have a, uh, uh, they, were, they were saying they were recruiting a county CIO and that a new county CIO would be in place by July. The county director uh, said that. 
it's still not there. So to me, it's it's sobering. It's not the considered approach. And I, you know, and I think some of it is because um, you know when we had a direct report IT staff, there was a sense of urgency. We wanted to make sure that the records were protected um, and uh, the monies were collected. That's what the job of the Registry of Deeds is. And um, uh, hopefully things will move forward. But I still have concerns because we live in an era of cybersecurity hacks, cybersecurity risks, scams. And one of my concerns is the documents that get recorded, the documents that, are, that give you the legal title to your home, things can be done to them. And I'm concerned because uh, one, the, the registry has no control over the IT. I'm concerned because in, in uh, one calendar year, um, uh, it, when things were vibrant, we'll see how it goes uh, this cal calendar year, $82 million was collected. And I'm, I'm afraid that that's a target of cybersecurity risks and scams. So um, the IT fight, to me, um, I, I, it didn't make any sense why it was happening, and now it appears that it was really uh, a money grab to, 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 come, to get access to funds that by law uh, belong to the Registry of Deeds. And you know, we'll have to work through it. But, so um, what you're saying right now is that there is no person in that position. What happened was, yes, they're supposed to be. We had a Registry CIO. And, um, now we now that's been gone but they said oh well we'll make it a county cio now the county cio will be in charge of county it and registry it well that county cio position uh, is 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 still you know they said they were bringing in another person it, it's still not done so uh, where where i have an issue is w on june 30th 2021 if that permanent position had been filled the registry would have had um two full-time people, including the registry CIO, and we had a temporary, uh, 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 like, apprentice. And now um, th there's just th that, that one person, and that person's doing county things. So, you, know, you know, so we don't have, we need more staff uh, in this day and era of technology. Um, but I, 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 it didn't make sense to me, and okay, if it's a grab on money, now it's starting to make more sense to me. Uh, but. It, it's just, it's too bad. But we've got to work through it. And I think it's important. Uh, it's a sobering problem because, um, you know, NBC News just did a study on um, the increase in hacks. And they did uh, a study on Massachusetts communities, Ma Massachusetts government communities that have been hacked and had breaches and had ransomware. And, you know, it's, it's, it's frustrating because I, I pride myself, as you know, coming here that the, the Norfolk Registry of Deeds, and, and based on the support that that was conveyed to the county commissioners, people were writing that it's the, it's the best registry in Massachusetts for, for operations and for services. So I just don't see this as, um, um, I, I just see it as not uh, being fair to the people that use the registry, which is everyone that owns property, and not being fair to the taxpayers of Massachusetts and Norfolk County that, that rely on the collections. Um, because whether, you know, the collections in Norfolk County for deeds excise goes to the state and they use it, that money, uh, the state uses it for public safety, for education, for social service programs. So I just, I just you know, I just think things could be a little better. So the saga continues. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, I, do, I do want to um, talk about, uh, well, where we just talked about scams. I do want to talk about the consumer notification part of the registry, that service, and how that protects folks throughout the county. And, you know, when, I, when we mentioned consumer notification service, Norfolk County was the first registry to offer this uh, years ago. Uh, in Massachusetts. And it was because we had an on-site direct report IT department, you come up with ideas. And one of the reasons that we needed a consumer notification service is that the FBI was saying that the fastest growing white collar crime was deed and property uh, fraud. Now, the, the consumer notification service is an anti-fraud program. It doesn't prevent the fraud, but because we had an IT staff, we set it up. You can go to our website at www.norfolkdeeds.org, which again is IT driven, and you could sign up. And what it does is you get a notification anytime a uh, document gets recorded in your name. 
or close to your name. My name is uh, William Patrick O'Donnell. I always say, I've signed up. I've got notices for William J. O'Donnell. I look it up, it's, it doesn't, it's not me. But there may be a time I get a notification and it's, wait, that's the deed to my house. Oh wait, that's a, a, a mortgage I didn't sign. And you know, uh, we're out, uh, you know, we're getting back out there post COVID to the Foxborough Historical Society. And I mentioned the consumer notification service and uh, a, 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 an elderly lady got up and said, you, you, when you came to the senior center, um, you, you know, we looked up the information, a fraud was picked up, and uh, she goes, I never signed that. And, and she went to the Foxborough police, and she even said, she says, I'm older, my, my, my kids don't know everything I did. They might have thought I signed for that um, mortgage, and I didn't. And again, you can't prevent the fraud. However, and, and, and again, um, she only found it because we were looking up the documents. Uh, the registry staff was looking up the documents for her. But she said that's why everyone should sign up for this consumer notification service. It's free and um, you never know. And again, there's heightened uh, IT scams going on out there. And, and uh, the biggest asset people have is, is property. So uh, again, you can't prevent the, the fraud, but it can help, you can help, uh, you know, combat it by signing up for this and we have links to law enforcement and you might have to get an attorney yourself to help straighten out uh, a, a, a bad thing that can happen to people. It certainly keeps a, an individual in the know. Yes, I mean, you know, my, my parents uh, bought Norwood in 1959 and you showed up, you, you did the closing and you didn't look at another piece of document or property. They didn't know about homesteads and, you know, oh, you know, checking on your title to make sure it's, it, it's not being compromised. And again, that's the beauty of being on the website. You, you know, um, yes, you can get notification, but you can also uh, look things up. Uh, we've tried to bring the registry uh, records into people's homes and businesses. So through our system, we have the Brown Tech Management System. Uh, it's done a nice job operationally because we collect $82 million. Uh, we recorded over 200,000 documents. Uh, it, it does the job, but it also has allowed us to put these documents out there so that you can do research. Uh, our documents are integrated uh, and index and documents back to 1793. And so you can look up all this information, again, for the historical and genealogical research, or just look up your information, um, you know, to, to, you know, just double check, you know, whether the mortgages uh, have been discharged or, you know, just, just see what's been recorded. But if you want to get a notice that you can follow up on, and if you're not good with the computer, you can call our customer service center at 781 Four six one six one zero one, and and say hey, I got this notice, and, and they they can walk you through it, you know, because uh, we pride ourselves, and there's no I in team. We have a good team of employees that that do a nice job helping people. I do want, uh, and I know we did a entire program on community partnerships, but I do want to uh, speak about uh, one recent donation to Interfaith Social Services. Yes, um, we have a lot of partners. And, and again, we have partnerships with, with the food pantries. And I, I tell people, go to our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, because we have a li list of all the food pantries in Norfolk County. They need, even though we do it during the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, they need, um, they need, they need food all the time. And we're talking about uh, prices going up, so certainly now more than ever. Oh, there's a need in every community, uh, not just in Norfolk County, across the state, and, and I, w I would urge people to consider donations. But yes, we have other partnerships. We have a, a, a Suits for Success program, and one of our partners is Interfaith Social Services. They have a great career closet, um, one of the few places that wants women uh, pocketbooks and clothes and things like that. Um, and, and we had a donation to them. Uh, recently, uh, Inner City uh, Weightlifting, it's a, it's a nonprofit uh, centered in Dorchester and Cambridge, but they try to address some of the uh, inner city problems through um, health and uh, weightlifting, but they also have a component where when people are going for interviews, and quite frankly, some people don't even have, never mind interviews, just good clothes to, to, to you know, to, to go somewhere. So, um, they came by and it was great to see all the clothes that, that have come in um, being repurposed. And we have partnerships with the, um, the, the, the VA, the veterans, uh, you know, we thank the veterans for their service, but we, we go over to Jamaica Plain and, and, and drop clothes off. And, um, 
uh, we also just recently did the same thing that we did for interfaith social services. We went to a, a, a program, it's called Circle of Hope out in Needham and uh, uh, made donations of uh, the, uh, per their requirements. So a lot of these groups have their own requirements and we try to work through them. Uh, and if you want to donate to them directly, you can certainly go to our website and there's contact information. But uh, we pride ourselves on civic engagement and I think the Norfolk Registry of Deeds, again, it's an armor government that people probably haven't heard about, but we try to be impactful and help in any way we can, uh, in, you know, in, in outreach to the community. Well, I know this program was um, an update uh, for numbers and, and statistics, but naturally we get into some um, current news as uh, we have in, in update programs past. Uh, I certainly want to uh, thank you for coming in and sharing all this information with us today. Well, again, thanks uh, to you, uh, Mark, and uh, you know, thanks to the production team, and uh, more importantly, uh, I, I thank the people that view, that, that tune in, uh, and, and we're happy to provide this information. It, it's a, uh, uh, you know, government should, should be about helping people, and government should be about, at times, running it like a business, but also recognizing there's a, there should be a compassionate side to the, the delivery of services, even a, a registry of deeds that people may not know much about. Well, we should also mention and thank uh, the folks throughout the county, the access stations throughout the county that do pick up this program and air it. And often, if we are off in a week, because we do this uh, monthly, so we try to time it around the same time each month. But if we don't hit it right, I'll get an email from another director in another access center throughout the county, or somewhere in Norfolk County, wondering when the next episode is. So people are interested in what you have to say. Well, that's great. And again, uh, it, it's, it's what government should be about. You know, uh, and, and again, uh, what drives me uh, when I first became registered deeds is really the thought that the biggest asset most people have are their homes, and you have to get the information out there uh, because it is the biggest asset uh, in the registry deal deals with that big asset and if we can uh, provide the information and people can take steps to, to, to protect their property or to, to make things a little easier when they go to sell their property or refinance, we're happy to do it. That's what, well, that, that's what government should be about. On that note, uh, well said and we'll end it uh, there. I certainly welcome you back uh, for another update uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you at home for watching uh, this particular program. And just uh, keep in mind to support your local community access station in the community, in the city, town, where you reside. Thank you.